Уважаемый господин премьер-министр, It is our pleasure to receive you for the second time already at the Eastern Economic Forum, such a representative delegation from Japan. Such extent of participation of Japanese partners in the work in the forum has already be become a good tradition. It is a good opportunity to discuss the joint projects that have already been implemented and also to outline new guidelines. I have invited Mr. Prime Minister to participate in another major international economic forum, St. Petersburg Economic Forum, in the end of May 2018. And Shinzo has accepted our proposal. We have agreed to be both present at the opening of cross years of Russia and Japan on the 26th of May. As for the talks that have just concluded, they have been quite substantive and frank. They have demonstrated our willingness to constructively develop our mutual ties in various fields. Let me underscore. Lately, we have been able to bring back into operation a number of mechanisms of the Russian-Japanese political dialogue. In March, we have resumed consultations between Ministers of Foreign Affairs and Defense in the 2 plus 2 format. On the eve of today's meeting, we had there were talks at the level of heads of security councils of both countries. We have agreed together with Mr. Abe that Japan will soon be visited by the chief of general staff of the armed forces of the Russian Federation and commander in chief of the ground forces of the Russian Federation. Certain progress has also been a shift in trade and economic cooperation. For the first six months of this year, the amount of mutual trade has grown almost by 15 percent to 8.4 billion US dollars. We keep improving the structure of our bilateral trades turnover. The number, the amount of fuel and energy resources is decreasing in Russian export, while the amount of foodstuffs and agriculture is growing, as well as the products of non-ferrous metallurgy and chemical industry. During the talks, we commanded our joint efforts aimed at implementing the plan of cooperation proposed by Mr. Abba in eight areas and a joint list of priority projects. Intergovernmental Commission on Trade and Economic Issues is operating efficiently, as well as the high-level group and the Consultative Energy Council. To expand the business activity of the Russian and Japanese business, the Double Taxation Convention will serve to that goal. Participation of Japan as a partner country at Inaprom 2017 in Ekaterinburg has brought practical results and we'll be looking forward to seeing our Japanese representatives at Inaprom next year. Let me emphasize Japanese companies take advantage of all the opportunities of doing business at advanced development territories in April 20. 16, with the participation of JGC Evergreen and Bank of Hokkaido, greenhouse facilities were commissioned in the Khabarovsk Krai, where successfully implemented oil and gas projects Sakhalin 1 and Sakhalin 2 we built the first liquefied natural gas plant in Russia, the major part of which is shipped to Japan. Right now, the preparation for the third technological line is underway at this plant, we are stepping up cooperation in peaceful atom. And we expect that by the end of the year, we will outline specific joint projects on mitigation of the consequences of the Fukushima accident. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister and I discussed an idea of direct railroad communication between our countries. These, of course, would require deep and thorough consideration we are developing bilateral ties in education. Let me commend the activity of the Association of Universities of Russia and Japan under the auspices of which the Japanese-Russian student symposium is taking place these days in Vladivostok. Our cultural and humanitarian ties have revitalized, which help establish positive climate and build confidence in bilateral relations. In June, in the presence of Prime Minister Shinju Abe, Russian citizens were inaugurated, and in July, the 12th Festival of Russian Culture began in Tokyo. In November, Japan 
has been invited as a guest country to the St. Petersburg Cultural Forum. We are expanding sports cooperation. Right after this press conference at the Forest Federal University, Mr. Abe and I will visit the Tuna, the judo tournament among juniors named after Jidro Kano and also will participate in the ceremony of inauguration of the Center of Martial Arts on the Ruski Island. Of course, we have touched upon the issue of peace treaty. We've discussed in particular the possibility of joint economic activities on the South Korea Islands. As a result of the talks that took place in Moscow on the 17th of August between the foreign ministers of both countries, we a number of much promising projects were selected, which should be prioritized. I'm talking about cooperation in aquaculture, wind power, greenhouse facilities, waste disposal, and package tours. As has been agreed with Mr. Prime Minister this year, we have facilitated as much as possible procedures for visits by Japanese citizens of the bureau sites of their family members on South Korea. Unfortunately, as many of you know, because of bad weather, the direct flight did not take place. We intend to organize such a trip this month, and I hope that the weather would be fine. Naturally, a lot of attention has been paid to the crisis on the Korean Peninsula. We've already raised this issue during a telephone conversation on the 3rd of September, and today we followed with the detailed discussions. We have decisively condemned the launch of the medium-range missile by North Korea, which flew over the territory of Japan on the 28th of August, as well as another nuclear test carried out on the 3rd of September. Through its actions, Pyongyang is indeed posing a serious threat to the world, to peace and security throughout the whole region. I confirm to Mr. Prime Minister our position, which stands as follows. Settlements on the Korean Peninsula and uh, finding a solution to the nuclear issue is only possible through political and diplomatic means. We need, first of all, to defuse overall tensions, and then we need to promote a dialogue between all the stakeholders, as it is proposed, by the way, in the Chinese-Russian roadmap of step-by-step -step settlement. On the whole, our talks with Mr. Abba have been very substantive and useful, including in the context of further development of bilateral cooperation in many areas. I would like to express my gratitude for this to Mr. Prime Minister and to all members of the Russian delegation. Thank you. I was able to visit this beautiful city of Vladivostok once again. I'm grateful for the warm hospitality accorded by the Russian side. At today's meeting with President Putin, we've had a deep discussion of views on North Korea, which is now a threat which requires an urgent response. This is a serious threat to peace and stability of the Korean Peninsula. This is a serious challenge to the global non-proliferation system of nuclear weapons. We have the same understanding of the situation. I condemn North Korea in the strongest verbal form possible for the nuclear test it conducted. If North Korea follows this way, it will not have a bright future. This is a message which should be sent to North Korea to make it change its stand. Japan and Russia have reached common understanding that we would cooperate closely, including within the UN Security Council. Over the last year, we have achieved huge development in bilateral relationship within the framework of the eight-item plan, which we are promoting together at this forum. We have achieved results for more than 50 projects. They include the plan for the development of the city of Vladivostok to turn it into the Asia-Pacific Gate cooperation on digital economy and healthcare, building investment framework of one billion US dollars for project support. We signed a renewed agreement on taxation. We will continue with those efforts to achieve mutually advantageous results on our eight-point cooperation plan. As for the four islands issue, we have achieved certain progress after the meeting in Nagata, the high level, last December. We would like to see the peoples of both countries to visit each other actively and to cooperate on the four islands. We would want to see the 
people of living on this islands to be able to visit the graves of their ancestors. If this is the future that we want, we would be able to overcome the past that we've had for more than 70 years. We would be able to make this approach feasible. Joint economic activities on the four islands is something we are discussing right now on the basis of the agreement shift in Nagata last December. This time we have outlined five projects which require the soonest implementation. This is the project relating to aquaculture and seafood, vegetables growing in greenhouses, development of tourist programs, wind power generation and waste disposal projects. We will specify these five projects and we will speed up the consideration of the movement process. We will also continue discussions of other projects if it is implemented. If Koiga Resume is implemented, this would be a perfect pro project. This year, we've been able to visit graves and the surrounding territories, the access to which was impossible before that. And the head of the delegation said that he is 120 percent satisfied with this trip. In December, we planned the first visit of burial sites with the use of an aircraft. This is the first such visit in history, and I would like to express gratitude to you on behalf of the people of these islands who used to live on these islands. Vladimir, thank you very much for this. And let us improve such visits from the humanitarian point of view. It is also important to improve people-to-people -people communication. Next year, we're going to hold cross-culture years of Japan and Russia. The inauguration ceremony will be held on the 26th of May in Bolshoi Theater, which has a long-standing tradition. Let us turn 2018 into a year of mutual understanding and friendship between our nations. The fundamental theme for the Japanese-Russian relationship is signing a peace treaty. That's what President Putin said during his visit to Japan. And this time we've achieved new understanding and resolution that we will sign this peace agreement with our own hands. Vladimir and I agreed to hold another meeting during APEC summit in Vietnam in November. We intend to Hold dialogue using all the possibilities that exist.